Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we're going to be calling out the top 25 epic champions in Raid. I'm literally going to go from 25th up to 1st, in my opinion. The cool thing about Raid is everyone's going to have different opinions to me, so do comment down below the ones that I missed, the ones that I've just got completely out of sync, in your opinion, as well. Um, it's hard to go from 25 up to 1, because a lot of the time it depends on your account, depends on what you've already got, and therefore the gaps that you've got to fill. But in my opinion, these are the top 25, literally ranking them in order. And when we get to the top, you know, these champions are basically legendary champions. Yeah, they've got things in their kits which no other champion can do, which makes them so godlike. Let's dive in. Uh, I love doing this type of video. It does create a bit of a buzz in the comment section uh, when people think I've got it wrong or whatever. We're going to kick in strong. Yeah, we're going to go with a strong number 25. It's actually a champion that you can get, I think, as a login champion, or you certainly could at some point uh, with like special codes and stuff. But Rector Draft here is one of like the best epic healers in the game. Yeah, she is absolutely, she just brings such a lot of survivability to your team. She's damn fast. She's got great survivability stats herself in defense and HP. She's got a decreased attack, which, as far as I'm aware, just goes through anything. Like, even champion, even like weak hits it seems to land on. It's like it's coded incorrectly, but basically it's a crazy A1 because it works in so many places where it shouldn't work. Uh, but yeah, decrease attack A1. She's got a heal all allies A2 based on her max HP. So that's a, a great way to have the skill because you only need to develop her HP high to get good healing from it rather than some of the others where it's based on everyone's HP. Uh, after the healing, she gives people perfect veil. There's only like three or four champions in the game that do this skill where it covers your whole team. Uh, this is especially good for Hydra when you're fighting the head of Torment. Uh, or generally, if you're behind a perfect veil, you just like straight take less damage. So this is very cool, as well as continuous heals. And then she's got a revive with a good amount of health and turn meter as well, as well as that perfect veil for the person that she pops back up. And you're like, damn, I get it. I get why she's so good. But hold on a minute. The passive as well. So whenever anyone's under that Veil or Perfect Veil, when they get a turn, gives them a chunky heal as well, just for taking a turn. This is an epic top 25. She's coming in at 25th for me. 24th, okay. Probably not as meta as she was, right? But we're not calling out the top 25 Plat Arena champions here. I'm calling out someone that I would absolutely build out if I got them. Yeah, and in fact... Yesterday, on stream, I did exactly that with my Madame Sari on my free-to-play account. Yeah, she's just got one of the best PvP abilities in the game. Um, still, even though Polymorph sucks, and sucks for anyone who does debuffs, Madame is still absolutely quality. So good speed, good stats. Her A3 is the skill we're going to talk about. She removes every buff from the enemy, puts decreased attack and decreased defense in their place. The problem with the meta right now for high level play is that Polymorph is so rife and it won't change with the recent change they've, they've brought in. So when you're cleaning buffs off, you could get Polymorphed. When you're debuffing, you could get Polymorphed. So she spends most of her time as a sheep in high level play. But for the average player that's trying to make their way through the arena, who wants to use this in things like wave content like Doom Tower or uh, any dungeons, this is a brilliant ability. Okay, the A3 is absolutely, it's a god tier ability. The A2 is not, not too shabby either. AoE hit, hits for a reasonable amount of damage. Can also steal buffs from enemies. If she steals any buffs, the whole team get blocked debuffs for two turns, which is a great steal as well. So this is cool. Got a bit of uh, fear mechanics going on on her A1. And then she's got a passive where she can kind of shield herself as well. So Madame is my 24. Number 23. Okay. This one might cause a little bit of, um, not, not there, not there. This one might cause just, yeah, a little bit of upset. We'll see. But I love this dude. Like, Phoenix is so cool. He's such a fun champion to build out. So not quite like a must build like some of the others we're going to talk about because he's a little bit more niche, but he's got such a good kit. Firstly, his A1, it just hits so freaking hard. Like, I can't even explain it. It's like a cannon's going off 
with with dual shots and it smacks people into the dirt so places an extra hit if they've got any sort of debuff yes yeah, so you lay your drop defense he comes in with this skill he's killing anyone like if you build him well he kills anyone with this skill and when they die it cannot be revived it's actually kind of like a niche awesome pick for live arena yeah you if you've got rap against revivers you get a well-built phoenix with some sort of protection around him he just comes in a one in and he is an absolute menace at taking people down so this is very fun his a2 block buffs really good hydra skill really good skill for kind of like wave-based enemies faction wars that type of stuff puts block active skills for a turn if this skill does not place block buffs yeah, so this is quite interesting. So it's a 75% block buffs, if not block active skills. And block active skills is actually like a god tier debuff, actually. Um, if Tally is around, which she never is, then gets bombs as well. Don't worry about that. Uh, and then the A3 here is a good boss ability. So decreased defense and decreased speed. We like it. So if you're up against like a single target boss, uh, someone like the Ice Golem, he could come in, kill the side ads, and then put your decreased defense and decreased speed on the boss really really fun champ if he had some sort of passive that made him stay alive forever or something damn <laughs> then he'd be a legendary like he's he's actually god tier okay coming in at number 22 actually in the same faction here inquisitor shamal so we spoke about hydra a few times already actually but this dude is like well he's just got something no one else does and that's why he's in this kind of top 25 in hydra if you're up against the head of torment he does something no one else does he stops you ever taking a fear. Not only that, he will boost the turn meter of the leader again and again and again for each fear that is dropping, which makes him absolutely insane for Hydra. Yeah, it makes your teams just run so much smoother. You don't even need to build him high damage. You can literally build him as a tank and just let this steel do all the work. You put someone in your leader position that's going to be doing absolute colossal damage or crazy amount of turn meter gain for your team, whatever. There's lots of options for that. And he will just keep them going and going and going. It's pretty nuts. So this passive is busted. It's busted. So good. His A1 um, is an okay one. Nothing crazy going on here. His A2 does hit like an absolute cannon. So triple hit ignores 25% of the target's defense and then a further 25% for each buff on him. So you put three buffs on him. He's going to ignore 100% of the enemy's defense. That will kill anyone. Yeah, so again, he can be used in different ways. He can either be used as the one-shot king in arena or in, in waves of high-level enemies in Doom Tower, or he comes in as your Hydra God. Really, really cool champ. Okay, number 21. You see me glancing down at my list here. Uh, this guy, um, I've got to be honest, when I was doing this, I actually brought his rank down a touch on the website while I was doing this on hellhades.com because I felt like I had him a bit too high. He was in amongst the kind of real top tier. And I was like, yeah, he's probably just a touch below that, but he's still brilliant. Yeah, I had him on one of my free-to-play accounts. He bossed the free-to-play account. He's always smiling, which is nice. Yeah, give us a smile. There it is. Uh, so yeah, Jute Pierced, cool champion, good base defense, good base HP, uh, very hard to kill. Decrease accuracy on his A1, not bad. AoE drop defense and drop attack on the A2. This is a great steal on a three turn cooldown. 100% chance if it's booked. You've also got here uh, the ability to provoke one enemy on the A3. Now, at first, I used to call this out as a crap skill, but the amount of times it came in clutch when I used him on the free to play, uh, I, can't, I can't rule it out anymore. Like making himself unkillable and just honing somebody in on him can be the difference between winning or losing a fight, can be the difference between three star and or not in faction wars. So this skill is actually better than I ever gave it credit for. And then he's got defense in faction crypts as well. Great champion, will be a hard carry for a lot of teams. Okay, number 20. Can you believe number 20, the freebie? So I believe High Katoon is still a top 25 epic champion. Totally underrated because we get her for free. Yeah, she just brings so much that we need in a team. She's giving decreased speed against single targets like bosses. She's boosting our speed and our turn meter on a three-turn cooldown. And she's pushing back the enemy's turn meter with a hit. She's got speed in all battles. She can be played 
basically anywhere in the game. And, you know, you can build great clan boss teams utilizing her speed and her speed aura. You can build great Dark Fae teams utilizing her. Uh, she's just super relevant in stuff like Spider, Ice Golem, where you're trying to control speed. Just feel like she's super underrated. And that's because we get her so early for free. So absolutely, like, still, until you get better, and there's not that much better even when you get it, honestly, she is a great speed freak type of champ. So yeah, High Katoon in my top 25. Number 19. This one might throw a few people off, but I love this champion a lot. Strank comes in at number 19 here, and damn, what a great epic they've added to the game with this dude. So damn, look at the look as well. I love the visual of this dude. Super cool. So yeah, good speed. Okay base stats. Nothing, nothing too sexy on the base stats. Lots of base attack. We've got here attack one enemy. Can place a weaken for two turns. And it increases to a 75% chance if they're under a burn. So 40% naturally, 75% chance if they're under a burn. For an A1, a 75% chance to place an, a weaken is kind of crazy for an epic. Okay. The A2 here, double hit. Heals him by 15% of his max HP on each crit. Nuts. Like, that's a crazy big heal. It's like having inbuilt lifesteal in a champion. Uh, gives him self-increase attack as well if the target's under HP burn. So pumps his damage up when they're under a burn. And you're like, ah, oh, yeah, but we need the burns. Don't worry. Here comes the burns. 100% chance. This is an epic. 100% chance of placing an HP burn for two turns on a three-turn cooldown. This is an epic. Builds his turn meter by 15% if at least one enemy is hit with a crit. Yeah, so he's gaining turn meter, he's healing himself, he's boosting his own damage, and then he's got this passive as well, where his damage just scales and scales. So increases his attack and crit damage by 5% every time a burn triggers on an enemy. He's a great Hydra champion, he's a great spider champion. He's just generally awesome. Like, he's such a good epic champ. So, strength number 19. Okay, moving into number 18 territory here. I guess this one's a bit more of a one trick, but still deserves to be on a top 25 list. One trick, maybe a two trick. Okay, so a lore is just like a must build epic. She just is. She's just so good. And it's really all revolving around this A1. Like, she can just drop a single target's turn meter to the floor. She needs accuracy. She needs crit rate. And she needs to move quite quick, okay, to make this happen. But finite all the way through normal. Not on hard because you can't drop his turn meter. But on normal, she is godlike in terms of the finite encounter. Triple hit A1, so she's breaking a lot of shields. And then as soon as that shield is down, she's keeping his turn meter down on the floor. Dark Fae as well. Once you've got rid of your enemy wave, uh, which you can help with a bit with this A2, you can just keep Dark Fae's turn meter down on the floor with this skill. So Allure is so good for this. The A2 is not bad. It's not brilliant, but it's an AoE hit. Um, you've got a chance to put weak source drop defense and a nice chance to sleep. So the sleep is probably more effective than the drop defense, honestly. You'd rather bring someone else in with drop defense, but at least you've got a form of control going on. The A3 actually hits hard, ignores defense, but she needs so many stats that you don't really activate the A3 until your gear is kind of up in that godlike territory. Yeah, Maya Law hits hard, whereas Maya Law in a free to play would be like, I just want to get the turn meter drop happening. Yeah, so that's the difference. You just want 100% crit rate, accuracy, speed, and some way to stay alive. That's your preference. And then after that, you load damage if you've got better stats. Faction Crip Aura as well, not too bad. She's hard to keep alive because her stats are low. But damn, if you can, she's a turn meter god. S. Goddess. Uh, right. Coming in at number 17. Where are you? I see. My list is a little bit all over the place because I changed my mind a couple of times. Where are you? Fats. Racking the fats. This dude brings a lot to the table. He really does. Again, kind of underrated because he's just so useful in tons of areas of the game. Basically, a legendary in an epic skin. So we've got a big drop defense on his A1. 
We've got a burn and poisons on the A2. This skill, super underrated. Like, this is a great way to get some damage out from his kit. Three turn cooldown. He's then bringing your whole team crit rate and crit damage plus ally attack or three champions ally attack. It's super cool. Yeah, ally attack is still a brilliant, brilliant skill. Great in clan boss. Great in pretty much any boss situation. Because of the crit rate and the crit damage, you can scale back some of the stats you're building on your other champions. Or if you've got some people that you're not really building for damage, this just helps them to do damage. Yeah, so this is nice. Got a passive as well that uh, he's going to deflect some of the damage on him to allies, which is quite nice because he's a bit squishy. But yeah, this dude is uh, brilliant. He's a brilliant, brilliant epic. Okay, then let's move on to number 16 here. And I guess he's made a resurgence to the top groups, yeah? Because Husk is was always someone that I liked, yeah? He's always a champion that I liked and would kind of talk about as an underrated champ. But he's so freaking good for Hydra now that he steps up into this top 25, into a good spot. Number 16, decent spot to be. He can be used anywhere in the game. His A2 gives you a big smack, yeah? Enemy max HP hits and has got a good chance to stun. So if you're using it against kind of big waves of enemies, the stun is helpful, the damage is good, and then when he hits with this on a boss, the damage is phenomenal, yeah? It's really high. So this is a good skill generally, but against Hydra, when you're trying to beat down those heads, this skill ramps up a notch because he is seen in the top teams in the game, or, or some of the top teams. His A1 also brings a really nice chance to get a provoke on a double hit. Yeah, so again... This is good for Hydra, especially not bad outside of Hydra. But Husk really comes in because of his power in the A2 smack. The A3, not that fussed about, honestly. Um, so yeah, Husk coming in number 16. Number 15. This is one of my kind of like favorite epics in the game, honestly. Like one of my favorite epics to get because I just know how much work the Venomage can do. Yeah, really, really cool champion. Very sassy with the dancing. Very sassy. Great base stats. Got an A1 here, which will destroy the target's max HP. Actually really good against Scarab Boss if you're trying to get through Scarab early on. Um, underrated for Scarab Boss. I used to use Venomage in one of my free-to-plays to do a massive amount of destroying max HP. Um, each heal reduction, but that's part of a kit as well. Each hit also activates poisons or a chance to activate poisons. So what does that mean? You get an instant pop of damage if poisons are out there. Very cool. You kind of want to pair Venomage with other poisoners to get real effect out of that A1. I'll jump to the A3 next because this is an AoE, heal reduction, and poisoner. Yeah, it poisons everybody in enemy waves and gives them heal reduction as well. Stops that healing coming in. Um, actually can be used in some of the best teams for stuff like Agref if you're using a Venomage Geo combo. Or you can use the heal reduction against someone like Magma Dragon and still bring, you know, a burn mechanic or something. Like, it's uh, like a ninja, specifically ninja rather than just burns. But yeah, definitely more ut uh, usability than you think. Also here, just attacking the whole wave with poison super cool means that she can become a bit of a solo farmer for some high-level dungeons as well. Also brings a decreased defense and attack if there's poison out there. Brilliant, brilliant A2. And one of the best things about a kit is the passive here. So if heal reduction is out there, your whole team just take 15% less damage. It's a massive, massive reduction of damage. Think about this in clan boss when the damage starts ramping up. Probably gives you about an extra 5 to 10 turns of hits coming at you because of this passive. It's very cool. Um, in fact, it's a passive you'd normally see on a legendary level champion, honestly. A good one. Accuracy in all battles as well. Super clutch early on in the game. So Venomage comes in as my number 15. Uh, 14 then. Champion I don't own yet. I nearly got him. I'm so close. My number 14. A champion I do not own yet. But I'm close. I'm closing in on the Dark Kale. I should have had him so long ago. But uh, I've just been lazy in doing my normal Doom Tower. But I am now working on it. I've done every secret room this month. Next month he will be mine. Uh, yeah, Dark Kale actually plays like a legendary champion. Yeah, he's just so damn good. Good base stats. Uh, triple hit A1. We love to see it. Great for Fire Knight and generally good when you look at the, the effect. So booked, 35% chance to instantly activate 
two poisons or a poison and a burn. Pop of damage like that. That's why he's so good. He speeds the damage up, uh, which is very cool. His A2 is an AoE. Decrease attack. Decrease attack is probably the best skill in the game for Ice Golem, but also just generally good. Most of the enemies we face are attack based. Most of the bosses we face are attack based as well. Each crit also, and this goes up to 100%, also has a 100% chance of increasing all debuffs on a target by a turn. Yeah, so basically, if you're bringing in other poisoners, other burners to help with this mechanic, when he does his A2, he's increasing their, their count, which means that when he activates them, the count is basically where it was in the first place. Super cool. Um, and he's got this poison and poison sensitivity still on his A3 as well. Then his passive here, very underrated passive, decreases the crit rate of enemies under two or more poisons by 15%. Guess what the average crit rate of enemies in PvE is? 15%. Yeah, pretty much every enemy you face in PvE has got a 15% crit rate base level, and then they get buffed or whatever. But that means that you'll never be crit in clan boss, for example. Yeah, it's just super underrated as a passive not being crit means you don't get that spiky damage that's hard to maintain this is actually very very cool dark tail coming in big so number 13 then who have i got as 13 oh yeah yeah i know i know one of the golden oldies just got this guy on the free to play royal guard for me like we spoke about husk already this guy is husk but with more to his kits that's pretty much what it is He's got the big enemy max HP hit against all enemies. We love it. Okay, it's a massive smack. Great against bosses. Um, you know, used to be like the spider mechanic, but now, well, he's back as the spider killer. But he's also just super good in Hydra, in pretty much any boss fight, honestly. Pretty much any boss fight, this is doing a ton of damage, apart from clan boss. He's bringing a big decreased defense as well, if you put accuracy in his kits. I would suggest nowadays you probably should because he's good at elsewhere as well. And this is the most underrated part of his kit and it is basically godlike. Yeah, so four hitter on a four turn cooldown. Every hit books to 75% chance of placing decreased speed. You're basically putting out decreased speed. Okay, if you're fighting a single target. Dark Fey boss, don't worry. Decreased speed's going on. Yeah. Also, each hit, 75% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 25%. Nobody talks about this skill. It's so good against a single target boss. Against Fire Knight, this is brilliant. Turn meter drop and decrease speed. And then I'll come in with the big slam. Yeah, this dude is absolutely like brilliant as an epic champion. Also gives you attack in dungeons, which is not bad as well. Probably wouldn't really use him for that because you'd rather have a speed aura or something. His base speed, I'm not going to lie, it lets him down. Okay. He is slow. That's probably why in the Arbiter uh, like series thing, he kept getting slayed. Yeah, he's so slow. He's just standing there like, ah. Uh, well, wake up, Royal Guard. Speed up because the rest of your kit is good. I would have loved to have seen one of the Royal Guards do the kind of whirlwind slam on some of those Dark Elves. It would have been really cool if they'd done it that way. As it was, they all just got absolutely owned. But still, Royal Guard coming in as my number 13. Let's move to number 12. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Only recently have they brought out basically an upgraded version of Vogoff. But Vogoff, I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Like, in terms of individual champion guides, I think Vogoff might have the most views of any epic that I've done a video on. Yeah, because he's just so good and his kit's quite... Uh, quite difficult to understand, maybe? Maybe, I'm not sure. Anyway, he's super good. Yeah, he's so cool. And he brings something that other champions just can't do. Someone said to me, you know, do a video where you're just talking about champions that do stuff others can't do. Vogoth's kind of in that camp, okay? And it's mainly through his passives. So I guess we'll start there. Whenever he is attacked, heals all allies by 50% of the damage or 25% if it's bosses. 50%. If you build him high HP and lowish defense, then he's going to take big, bigger hits and therefore he will heal your team for more. You need a good balance though. You don't just want him to squish down and be dead. He can't, he's not unkillable, 
but he is such an impactful healer. Against Bommel, if you don't have the kind of like crazy um, bomber in terms of the rats, then this guy's your next best thing. Yeah, he will take damage and heal your team. Such an effective way of dealing with the bomb damage. Yeah, because the bombs go off. They The bombs are not a boss. You will get 50% of that healed for your whole team. Really, really effective. Great in arena teams as well. If you don't think you're going to go first and you need a way to sustain hits before you let your nukes out, Bogoff is a great way to do that as well. Second passive though, when attacked, puts a leech on the attacker. Yeah, and if they're under provoke, um, if they're under a provoke placed by this champion, which is one of his other skills, also has books to 100% chance of increasing the cooldown of a skill on the attacker. It is mainly an arena thing because you can't provoke a whole lot of bosses, but still an interesting part of his passive. But the leech is great in kind of any content. Um, the A2 then is an AoE. Books up to a 75% chance to provoke. Very high chance for an epic. Um, also a chance of putting decreased attack when you get the provoke out there. Again, it's a shame because you can't provoke bosses. This only is against waves of enemies, but it's still extremely good in places like Doom Tower or Faction Wars or just waves leading up to a boss. And then you've got a triple hit A1. Just makes him useful in somewhere like Finite. And you've got a chance to increase random debuffs on an enemy as well. His kit is brilliant. Again, he's super slow. He's super slow, which is a bit annoying. But then he doesn't really need speed to do his job. That's the main thing about him. Like He's just... A big meat shield that gives healing to your team. Very, very cool. Okay, then number 11. Oh, I wonder if some people are going to think this champion should be higher. Godseeker Aniri. Brilliant champion. Like, void, epic. Super impactful to pull this champion on your account. Godseeker is great. Plays in my absolute top tier team for Sand Devil, yeah? Two-man squad takes down uh, the Sand Devil, stage 24, no problem. And again, like a lot of this is based on these champions. They're crazy passives. Godseeker's got a crazy passive. That does more healing for your team, 10%. If an ally is about to die, pre um, preempts that hit and instantly puts revive on death on them. So they're about to die, you just get a quick revive. That's the first thing. Also brings another revive. So if, there, if you've got someone else who's down by the same hit, she's like, don't worry. I got you as well. You're coming back with a good amount of health and turn meter. And then don't worry. I'm going to heal the whole team as well. Um, and also we're going to increase your buffs. Yeah, it's just so good. Uh, also got a bit of a cheaty heal on the A1, which is not too bad. But Godseeker is just a great, great support champion. Good healer, good reviver, and has got some mechanics which no other champions have got. Uh, apart from maybe Marishka, who's known as the most OP legendary in the game. So, Godseeker coming in number 11. Number 10. I wonder if I got these two the wrong way around, actually. Rethinking it. Maybe these two are the wrong way around. But still, Ugo. The reason why I put Ugo above Godseeker is I just feel like Ugo's used in more content. But maybe not. Um, probably the best epic in the game for Hydra. We've already spoken about a few. I don't know. Just for her role. That's the, that's the thing with Raid. Like, you're talking roles rather than just who's the best. Ugo is bringing a lot to the table. Leech on the A1. AoE drop defense and AoE block buffs on the A2. On one skill, it's super, super impactful. Block buffs on Hydra is godlike. Drop defense just helps you do more damage anywhere. On a three turn, it's really, really impactful. The chance of placing block buffs increases for each enemy alive. So you're like... Only a 50, well, only a 75% chance on the block buffs. Not really, because pretty much anywhere you're fighting, you've got four enemies. Goes up to 95. Um, yeah, this basically, you can make this 100%. So block buffs, super impactful. Also brings a mini cleanse on the A3 and a revive all, uh, all allies if she's the only one left alive. So the mini cleanse and the decent heal happens whenever. If she's the only one alive, and she's going to revive everybody, which could be so clutch in Hydra or Arena. Super clutch, especially when you pair it with a passive. That whenever she's the last one alive, she gets block damage. Plus increased speed. So she's basically moving quicker towards having the next turn for the big revive. And she can't take damage for that period of time unless someone whips off the block damage. So yeah, Ugo, 
comes in at number 10. Right then, on to number nine on the list. And so yeah, we're into the, the big boys here. A lot of these just do stuff that no one else can do. A Kemptum is my number nine. I love this epic. Yeah, it's such a fun addition to the game. It's only got a couple of skills, but they are bangers. So again, pretty decent base stats, a little bit low on defense, so it's a bit difficult to keep alive. He's got an A2, let's start here. Triple hit A2, each hit, 75% chance of increasing the duration of hex, or if they don't have hex, placing the hex. Each hit, okay? So it's almost guaranteed you're putting hex out there and probably extending it a turn as well. On a three turn cooldown, and it hits pretty damn hard as well. He's then got an A1, attacks one enemy three times, books to 50% chance of placing a poison, but if the enemy's under hex, he'll do a debuff spread. Okay, so he's actually placing poison somewhere, but he's spreading it elsewhere. If they've already got other debuffs, he's spreading those as well. It's just a cool synergy of kits. And then his passive is reacts like no other champion in the game. So books to 100%, 100% chance of inflicting damage from one poison uh, debuff to enemies under hex. So what it does, it pops the damage, but it pops it in the way as if he actually physically hit them. Yeah, which means that if he's wearing stuff like lifesteal gear, he will actually heal from the damage going off. Whereas a poison normally wouldn't proc healing from stuff like lifesteal. Super, super cool kit. Got speed in all battles. Really, really versatile champion and could do hella crazy stuff. So yeah, Kempton's my number nine. My number eight. Oh yeah. Number eight. My carry this year on the free to play, the stag. Very, very simple kit, honestly, but so effective, so useful uh, in so many places. Crazy base stats, that's the first point, right? That has to come into the kind of check on these champions. Very fast, very easy to keep alive. Massive base health for uh, a champion that does this type of skill. It was A2, this is his bread and butter. Uh, AoE drop defense and drop attack. Yeah, books to 95% chance. You can take the mastery, which gives you an extra five. Gives you 100% chance to land it on a three-turn cooldown. Great skill. Also bring in decreased speed on the A1, which is brilliant. So simple is Kit, yet he's so effective. And he brings this kind of accuracy buff if anything is resisted. So yeah, stag for me, number eight. Number seven, this one might be controversial. We will see. I love this dude, though. Taragi the Frog. He's mainly a clan boss champion, right? So that's that's a kind of call out. But wow, if you do not own unkillable teams, Taragi the Frog is the single best epic pick you can find. The single best epic for clan boss you can find if you do not own a way to make an unkillable team. Okay, ally protection is the best skill for clan boss if you're not building unkillable. At the same time as putting ally protection on your team, he's shielding. Uh, himself, which is really important if, if he's going to be taking damage from the ally protect. And then he's also got this reflect damage and he's also healing as well. It's such a crazy A3 for an epic champion. He's got a passive where, where he's attacked, he can apply poisons back at the attacker. So, and that's per hit. So, against clan boss, if you're against an affinity clan boss, he actually hits you more times. He does more hits on his AoEs. So you've got more chances to throw poisons back. Decrease attack, super important skill for clan boss on his A1. And then the A2 is anything non-clan boss. So it's like coming in with a good chance to provoke. Um, and it increases for each debuff on the enemy. So if you've got some stuff like drop defense or poisons out there, then the provoke's got a much higher chance to land on an AoE on a three turn. His kit is super good. Resistance as well. I don't suppose you really would use that anywhere. But ultimately, Taragi the Frog because he's so valuable for clan boss, comes in as my number seven. Okay, number six. Now we get into the big boys. Which one, which one, which one? Yes, Deke. Number six. Can anyone argue with that? He's actually available, I think it still works, as a free epic when you start the game. I cannot believe those words. Like, what a carry this champion is to get at the start of the game. Literally coming in as one of my best epics. Leech on the A1, double hit. Double hit means okay for Fire Knight. 
Leech is super good, and each hit is a 50% chance to play it when you got uh, when he's booked up. The A2 drop defense, really valuable in basically all content in the game. Books to 100% on a three turn. And then the A3 on a three turn cooldown, builds turn meters of all allies, drops back the enemy turn meter, and he goes again, which makes the cooldowns of everything else one turn less because he's getting an extra turn. So this is on a three, it's basically on a two. Although this is on a three, it's basically on a two. He just cycles turns so quick. He creates some of the best plan boss teams in the game because of the extra turn mechanic. Brilliant in arena, brilliant for any content. He's just so damn good. Brings you speed in all battles as well. Great champion. Kind of similar champion actually coming in as my number five. We're in the top five now. Number five, Seeker. He's basically like Deke, okay? But his turn meter fill means that he's easier to use for that same type of stuff. He's basically just an extra turn god. Like, just cycles your, your turn meter for your team so fast that he creates some of the best clan boss teams in the game on a two for one ratio. He's also freaking good at arena defense because of his passive. So whenever someone is hit with a crit, remember I spoke earlier that PVE you don't really get crit, but PVP you do. And in PVP you get crit a lot. So he's just boosting uh, people with increased defense as soon as he's hit with a crit in arena. Makes him really good in a go second arena team. Brings a provoke for the A1 as well. Just a brilliant champion. Definitely like a must build champion in terms of epics. Number four then. Number four for me is Man Eater. Just because he allows you to do stuff that you shouldn't be able to do in this game. He enables the unkillable clan boss setups. And they're so freaking good. So his A3 is what it's all about. Was unkillable on your team and block debuffs. He's actually getting a little bit of resurgence as well in live arena because it just gives you so much time. Yeah, if you've got a two turn block debuff and two turn unkillable up, it's very difficult to be killed over that period of time. So Man Eater starts coming into some of the live arena stuff as well. The rest of his kit, by the way, is not too shabby. His A1, if he crits, gives everybody decreased attack. I think. I think it's like one of the best A1s in the game. If you think about it, like all you've got to do is crit and then you're placing decrease attack on all enemies for an A1. It's so cool. Like people don't appreciate how good that is. The A2 as well is a turn meter dropper. So against bosses like Spider, Dark Fey, like there's, there's so many areas where this is so useful. People don't give him the credit it's due for the rest of his kit. Faction Wars, you've got block debuffs. You've got turn meter drop against bosses and you've got decrease attack for waves. Like he's such a good epic champion. Got HP in dungeons, got great base stats. Man eater is super cool. So I put one place ahead of him. Maybe these two are the wrong way around. Not sure really. Um, we're going to be bringing in Demitha. Kind of similar really. A similar idea uh, in terms of why they're so highly rated. So Demitha gets your block damage for a turn. Um, the reason why I put Demitha above Man Eater really is because you can go and farm RS with Demitha and then you've got your unkillable team like straight away for Clan Boss. A farmable rare plus this epic makes Clan Boss a joke to you as long as you've got the speeds and stuff. So I felt like that was enough to push her one place above Man Eater, but honestly, they're both super good. So... In Clan Boss, you've got the unkillable setup, which just makes Clan Boss easy. Outside of Clan Boss, though, still brings a lot. Block damage, heals, buff duration increase, healing again. Um, shields, like, she's also just good anywhere in the game. So Demitha, crazy base stats for an epic. Uh, I just feel like easily a top five champ for epics. Oh, top two then. Top two. My number two is Seer. She does something no one else can do in the whole game. And she does it phenomenally well. Yeah, she is the highest damage dealer in this game for any type of normal wave-based enemy. And because of that, she makes it look like a joke. Okay, her A3 
she cleans all of the buffs off of you and enemies. The more buffs she cleans off, it's uncapped, the more damage she's going to do. I've seen her do, not that you ever need it, but over 2 million damage on each target with this skill. It's crazy. It's absolutely nuts. Um, and even if you get her early on, which I did on my previous free to play, she's not as good early on because it works better when you've got teams that make sense or you've got better gear, all that type of stuff, because you do need to build her to hit to get some good damage out of this. But she still adds some control against enemies. Like the sleep mechanic here is no joke if you're hitting weak. But ideally, you get to the point where you just one shot absolutely everybody that you face. Against bosses, it's still an enemy max HP hit as well. So it's not just waves where it's good, but specifically waves are incredibly good. She also brings crit rate for your team and weaken for enemies. It's not that many champions that actually bring an AoE weaken. So pretty useful uh, as an epic as well. And then she's got an extra turn chance on her A1. The only reason that's good is because it gets you back to your A3 quicker. So this is on a four turn, which is actually quite long, which is why most people will use a Renegade or a Kaimar or a Yumiko, somebody to reset the Seer cannon. Yeah, but Seer is just so good. It can be used in any dungeon waves and is in basically the fastest teams in the game. Also actually pretty good in Arena. Yeah, when you're, when you're trying to just rip the buffs off our enemies, do tons of damage and sleep them at the same time, that all sounds good to me. So yeah, Seer number two. So have you guessed it, number one. This dude is my favorite epic in the game. I think he's the best epic in the game. I think he's a legendary champion. I do. I think 100%, again, a, a mechanic that nobody else does. He's a must have for certain fights. A must have. You should never have a champion, by the way, which is a must have for certain fights, but he is one. So Geo, why is he number one? Basically a combo of his A3 and his passive. That makes him number one. So his A3, turn me to drop for the enemy, um, puts a burn on the enemy and puts weaken on for three turns on a three turn cooldown. That alone is cracked. But yeah, this is, cr this is crazy as a skill. You then pair it with the passive. So decreases the damage his allies receive. That alone as the passive would have been brilliant, by the way. Just that line is amazing. It's like I spoke about with Venomage. It's like a legendary passive. Just that one line of text. But the rest of it gets crazier. So it decreases the damage received, deflects that damage onto every enemy with a burn. So basically pushing the damage back at the enemies. Very good for clan boss and for Hydra and stuff. Um, whenever this champion is attacked, deflects 30% of the damage instead. So on him, when deflected damage on each enemy hits, so whether it's this or this, 30% chance of dealing basically a mini Warmaster proc, a 3% max HP hit. 30%. So whenever anyone in your team is hit by an enemy that's got the burn out there, you've got a 30% chance of just procking damage, procking damage. This is... The Iron Twins godlike mode. This is the Agref godlike mode. There's so many places in the game where this is just absolutely a top tier damage mechanic. Yeah, and nobody else in the game does this. Uh, he's also got a decreased accuracy AoE A1. And he's got a buff cleanse, then attack enemy. Buff steal if they're under a burn. Uh, I always forget about this part of his kit actually. Buff steal if they're under a burn that he placed. Reduces his A3 if he kills someone, which is unlikely because he's not really a wave killer. Um, but yeah, he's just a crazy, crazy champion. HP in all battles. He's my number one. Who was your number one? I've been Hell Hades. That's my top 25 epics in Raid, Shadow Legends. I'll catch you later.